This is Inspiring Careers with your host, Ingrid Centurion. We're gonna talk about fascinating technologies that will impact your future. Meet inspiring entrepreneurs and people that are making huge differences in the community and around the world. We're gonna share career and life lessons of inspiration and success. Our mission is to inspire our viewers to make a better life for themselves by sharing our stories, our interviews, and documentaries. Please stay tuned as we have incredible guests coming up. Deborah is an accredited private attorney, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. She is from Framingham and she can be reached at 508 962 3466. Deborah is doing amazing things in the community and for veterans around the country. Thank you, Deborah, for being with us today. And thank you for having me. I'm so happy I have a female um, from Framingham on the show. You are extremely successful, and I want to share a little bit about your story. Sure. How, you know, where did you grow up? And tell us a little bit about your earlier years. Uh, I grew up in Framingham. And uh, I came here with um, my parents in 62, so it's giving my age away a little bit. <laughs> uh, I was educated in all the public schools here from Jonathan Maynard and Lincoln Elementary and Framingham South High. Uh, I left, uh, I, I was educated in law school at Boston University School of oh, Law. Very good school. Uh, after I left, um, uh, graduated from law school, I moved to Philadelphia. Uh, clerked on the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania uh, for a few years uh, and then uh, moved to uh, about 13 years after uh, living in Philadelphia I moved to Ohio to work for GE in their compliance department at one of the capital businesses. So your career you traveled a little bit and then you made it back to Framingham. I made it back to <laughs> Framingham which was uh, supposed to be exactly one year about 10 years ago. <laughs> okay great. So tell us a little bit about your uh, parents and their background. It's very interesting. Uh, right. Uh, my parents are um, from my father's from Tennessee, Bristol to be exact and my mother is from a small town in um, Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley portion of Nova Scotia. Uh, they met through um, the fact that my father was working for GE in Lynn, Massachusetts and boarding with my mother's aunt and took a particular um, interest or curiosity about a young woman in a photograph that was on my aunt's mantle. And when he mentioned it to her, uh, the aunt started thinking, I think we need to introduce the <laughs> to her. And that's exactly what happened. Oh, and okay. once they were introduced, they dated for four years long distance, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. Awesome. <laughs> and they had how many children? They have four children. Right. I'm and the first. You're the first. You're the oldest. Only girl, mm -hmm. uh, oldest, followed by three, three boys. And you have some Native American yes. uh, heritage. Yes. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the tribe and uh, some right. history there. The um, it's an Algonquin-based uh, um, tribe. The Malice, or the proper name would be Wolastiquique. Wow. Um, and that is from my father's side of the family. Uh, now that uh, we can tie, we can connect back to York County in um, New Brunswick, Canada. And I love your earrings. Thank you. Native American Indian. You got the. Feathers going on there. Yes, my feathers. <laughs> yes. You told me to wear color, so I wore color and right. earrings. <laughs> so, what inspired you to become a lawyer? Um, I think with my um, my mother always chastised me for talking too much and and predicted. She says you should be a lawyer. You'll probably be a lawyer. You talk all the time, and you're always right. So um, I don't know, maybe subconsciously I, I had that in mind that I would pursue uh, a career in law. I certainly knew I would be, um, uh, I would go to college. My, my great grandfather and my father had all been in college, had attended college. So, um, and uh, maybe one or two mentors uh, in my life uh, were lawyers. So, but the I real seed go. came from mom saying, every time 
You yes. talk too much. You yeah. you need to be a lawyer. Yes. So yes. she really put I that seed in there and, and, the credit, yeah. and motivated you. And she it was ingrained in your head. This is what I'm going to do. And and you were good at it. You you would even speak for your brothers. You told me. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I I had to talk for myself, and then my brother who came directly after me, David. Then I would talk for David and argue his <laughs> for him. But uh, yes. Now, how were your high school years? You were telling me a little bit about how you know everybody struggles through high school sometimes, mm -hmm. and they become late bloomers. Oh, I certainly um, would consider myself a late bloomer. And as we talked the other day, um, I, I hope people will take some inspiration from my struggles uh, where I couldn't tell time until I was seven years old, or I was in always a third grade, a third level reading group, which was a slower, more remedial needs to read. Um, and that really happened um, throughout high school. Um, and uh, I even had a, a guidance counselor who felt that I wasn't destined for college um, and prepared me for home ec classes and, and of the kind that would never get me into any decent college. So, um, but fortunately, my parents found out that um, I wasn't being tracked for college. They intervened, and um, the rest is, um, has been good. You know, I've persevered through what I had as early struggles to what I find in uh, being a successful attorney. And you were telling me a story uh, about, you, d you gave me some really great advice. I just love that quote you said. I showed up. Yes. And that's how it happened. Yes. And you showed up. Tell us a little bit about your story on how you had your resume on you. And I love <laughs> okay. that story. You gotta, oh, you gotta share true. that story. Okay. That's the story. I have a <laughs> lot of stories. But uh, <laughs> if you show up in life, you don't sit at home on the couch or hoping that something's gonna change in your life. If there's an opportunity out there, you have to grab it. You have to be in the mix and present. Uh, and the, when I went to, when I graduated from law school, I didn't have a job at the time. I moved to Philadelphia. I knew no one in Philadelphia. That's, this is the story. Went to, um, after I took the bar uh, exam, I went to a, uh, a networking event for the barristers, they call them, in um, Philadelphia. And you didn't know anybody. Didn't know anybody in the room either. But I would talk, the first person I talked to, I would ask, do you know anybody here? Of course they did. They'd introduce me to that group of people and that I'd and ask you the same said, place. you specifically said, can you please introduce me to someone? I, well, in, yes, I would ask That's them, right. would, you, would you introduce me to somebody here? Because so I you don't got know to meet people. a lot of people. I met a lot of people right. that evening, mm -hmm. leading to meeting the Chief Justice of the Supreme Judicial Court of Pennsylvania was present at that event. Wow. Uh, I shared with him that this is Robert N. C. Nix, uh, that my grandfather had graduated um, from Lincoln University before he went on to get a master's at Columbia in mathematics. And uh, my, uh, the Chief Justice knew my grandfather and um, so, or had known him through his father, who they both went to Lincoln together. So um, he asked me for my resume and I pulled it out of my purse because I had found a purse that I could actually keep a few resumes in without wrinkling them. He was rather impressed um, and therefore I ended up uh, working with him and he um, essentially appointed me to um, a clerkship on the Supreme Court. And I always tell young professionals that if you're looking for a job, you have to have your resume on you. Yeah. Resume I mean, and business cards. E exactly. Mm -hmm. So always have one prepared mm -hmm. and give them a paper card or a digital business card. Mm -hmm. But have your paper resume. He's mm -hmm. going to remember you because of that. Yes, you're, he you're, did, well, did you're probably me. the only one that had a resume <laughs> on them. On me. And and you had a big enough purse. <laughs> I, I was thinking about you. Like you had this big purse, and you're walking around. Yeah. <laughs> it was a purse, not a briefcase. Right. And it was well before you know the internet. And right. And exactly. Tablets. And exactly. So forth. <laughs> So that's that's great advice. You do definitely need to show up, and you got to network, and you got to sure. make the right connections mm -hmm. to launch your career to the next level. So tell us about the hardest case you've ever worked on as a lawyer. Um, and I think the most interesting that I'd share uh, with respect to a hard case was just the daunting task of getting a writ of certiorari through the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, 
you stand a, a less than 1% chance of success to do this. And I had been working on a tax case local uh, that was involved with, that involved the um, development and uh, zoning laws where um, I felt being violated and I felt um, a variance that was issued to build a, a particular development um, was unconstitutional. So uh, a number of people in this community of Framingham believe that it should be waged through the courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, that fell on me to write the writ, uh, which I'd never done before. Um, the, the community galvanized behind me in terms of collecting the money for the fees and also the professional printing that had to happen. And um, I was in constant contact with the clerk's office and, and educating myself on how to do it and completed a writ of cert to the U.S. Supreme Court in three weeks. Uh, threatened to quit twice, <laughs> um, but uh, persevered through that too and uh, was very pleased and honored that the, the writ was accepted to the first level, and that was being selected by one justice of the Supreme Court to go into what they call conference committee. So I, I, that's something I like to share, in that, and two, consistent with your theme, is, is a hard case set, um, but through perseverance, uh, a, a team, um, we were able to see the success of getting that, at least that far, into the U.S. Supreme Court. No, that's great. So what advice would you give to those up-and-coming lawyers? I, um, I would hope um, every lawyer has to appreciate that he or she uh, has a lasting impact in terms of the credibility and, and uh, respect we have or we don't have as attorneys, you know, the, the attorney jokes and so forth and so on. But um, in my career, I've, I've been, uh, I've faced uh, uphill battles because of a few bad apples, a few bad lawyers who have um, really left a bad taste in a lot of uh, clients' mouths. So, um, but for uh, perseverance with respect to providing solid legal uh, representation for um, my clients, um, you know, I've been able to turn around a perception. So. Um, be very uh, careful on your conduct, um, and um, you know, make and 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 I think it encourages people to uh, seek out attorneys uh, for help, uh, as long as they understand and appreciate that we're not all. Um, most of us are in it for the right reasons. All right. So tell us about what you're doing for the veterans and. Mm -hmm. the great service that you've done. Can you explain sure. a little bit about how you're helping veterans around the country? Uh, my clients come from all over the United States and that's how I met you, is through the veteran um, networking. Um, but uh, my private law practice is dedicated solely to veterans. Uh, a good portion of my practice is dedicated to assisting veterans challenge the discharges that they've received, meaning bad paper, also known as bad paper. Um, so I represent veterans between, before the boards and the, um, uh, the courts uh, when they um, get uh, bad paper, for example, other than honorable discharges, general discharges. I also help um, a smaller number of clients who have been either denied compensation benefits through the VA uh, or given such a low um, rating um, that um, those should be challenged as well. And those go, and I, I will handle an appeal of the, that nature. So you're very busy. I am busy, yes. There's no shortage of veterans for anybody who wants to go into this area of law. Exactly. <laughs> well, I really appreciate what you're doing for our veterans. Um, and, and they don't know that you're here for them. And so I wanted to make sure that you came on the show so oh, we can get the word out. And this will be aired uh, locally and then eventually nationally, so that's great. Great, you you'll be even busier. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I do um, operate word of mouth. Uh, that's how people know about me. So I got some fun questions for mm -hmm. you. You know, so if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Uh, 
I'm torn between crows, <laughs> they're very smart animals, <laughs> and a horse. And a horse. <laughs> and now you you have some nice hobbies. Oh, my oh, hobby is uh, yeah. golfing. Exactly. <laughs> You're, and you were trained by someone who was pretty good, yes, huh? Yes, you yes, must yes, be yes. really good out there. Yes, uh, Carol Johnson. Um, she she uh, coached me back in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. She's an LPGA uh, coach. Wow. Yes. We definitely want you on the golf tournament. Okay. And Let then me we know. have the advantage as well. It's a scramble. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And do you have a philosophy by which you live? Ooh. Um, yes, I say uh, never give up. Mm -hmm. Just never give up. Um, no matter, uh, no matter the obstacles. Exactly. Keep going and, and doing great things in your community. So thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm, I'm really proud of all the things that you're doing. I thank you for supporting our veterans. You'll definitely have a lot of referrals from me. And well, thank you. to all those women out there and, and young children who want to become lawyers, I encourage you. Uh, Deborah did it, you can do it. And I, I want you to take that practice and, and help others in the community as she's doing. So thank you so much. Thank you. You have a good day. Mm -hmm.